Taxation on silver purchases. Now that is a hot potato topic. Sounds like something that I want to get my teeth stuck into. So let's talk about how taxation can actually be a pretty good thing for silver buyers. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining us for another thought-provoking discussion about precious metals. Now this week I want to focus primarily on taxation, the thing that we all hate and potentially love. The argument that I'm going to present today is that VAT or sales tax on silver can actually be quite a beneficial thing for it at the other end when you come to sell it because it influences market value and not spot price is not what I'm talking about there but market value of what people in the market are willing to pay for a specific item and it certainly is to our benefit here in the United Kingdom. The sales taxes influence what the lowest common price is for a particular item and as such when you come to sell it at the other end Joe Bloggs silver buyer will pay what that minimum price is. It's a really interesting concept. Now, of course, taxation on silver is going to be a hot potato and there's going to be a lot of people who have differing opinions on it. But it is becoming more and more relevant across the world. We see mass amounts of online sales taxes being imposed on businesses, whether they be silver or gold or whatever related. And more specifically in the US, it's becoming more and more common. So really interesting kind of shift in the world at the moment. We'll talk a little bit about why that is. But definitely one that's going to split opinion I have no doubt so please feel free to comment with your thoughts down below in the comment section and uh, let me know your thoughts on this video by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to our channel if you've not already done so. Now taxation generally you know everybody hates taxes don't they? I mean I, I everyone hates paying taxes when it goes out of your bank account into the tax man's pocket there is no doubt about that but ultimately I don't have too many problems with paying taxes it's quite nice to be a functioning member of society and to actually have some of the other amenities that are out there as a citizen of a country so that's fine but generally speaking I am against taxation on precious metals I do think that precious metals are a saving mechanism and any government that is encouraging their citizens to save money for later in life or to buy a house I think should be encouraged so from that perspective it's kind of a bit of a double-edged sword that we do have taxation on silver certainly here in the United Kingdom and it comes as a double-edged double taxation because we have to pay tax when we buy it and then we have to potentially pay tax when we sell it so there's you know it's just one of those things I think Benjamin Franklin once said taxation or there's three or two things certain in life birth and taxation or something the three things birth taxation and death you know it's, it's one of those things where you kind of have to live with it and work with the system now when I say work with the system I don't mean by which you you, you know you go and do illegal activities or tax avoidance schemes or pay very little taxes when you really should be paying taxes that that's sort of there's morally gray avenues for that whether it's legal or not um, but at the same time I do think if we're in somewhere like the EU at the moment where there's a market economy on the continent whereby certain countries don't have taxation or have very lower end rates of taxation on the purchase of silver then taking advantage of that is in my opinion completely normal and natural certainly for something that's in my opinion shouldn't be taxed in the first place like silver so you know from purchasing silver from places like the European Mint or various other dealers in Europe that's just fine and I think it's only right to do so but it does potentially yield a interesting scenario happening at the back end of this year because all of those avenues of VAT advantage silver lower cost per unit silver will be closing and that kind of brings me on to why VAT is or VAT as we know it in the United Kingdom sales tax for those who don't know uh, is going to actually really help the value of your silver coins when you come to sell it post transition period ending and these new terms that we live on whatever they might be overnight that will mean that the cheapest piece of silver that you can possibly look to buy will suddenly increase because right now or as on the 30th of December you can go and you can look online at the European Mint or one of the other many dealers out there and buy an ounce of silver without some taxes on it and if you buy enough in bulk with the shipping it actually works out a significantly amount cheaper so that will disappear and then all of a sudden the most cheap piece of silver that anybody can buy will have increased by at least 15 to 20 percent and that 
is a really interesting concept, but it is not one that everybody can immediately take advantage of. Now, what I mean by that is it doesn't mean that you'll suddenly be able to sell all of your gold or, or all of your silver specifically to somewhere like a bullion dealer for you know, that increased price hike because dealers will only pay you spot price right now for bulk buyers of silver. But the Joe Bloggs market buyer on places like eBay or even places like the Silver Forum or Instagram or Facebook or wherever it might be that there's a marketplace for this stuff, he or she will suddenly be able to buy that silver, not at the cheap rate anywhere else. So they will, they will buy it. They will happily pay that cash for it. They will now no longer have the opportunity to get the cheap silver from elsewhere. So you get this kind of really interesting spike in the value of the market value of silver. That's what I'm predicting. Now, there are going to be a lot of people out there right now that are looking to take advantage of that. They're buying silver right now with the idea that come January the 1st, 2021, when this new transition period or this transition period ends and we go on to the new terms, that suddenly there are going to be all of these people, all of these stackers in the United Kingdom that are well, and potentially Europe as well, that are wanting to buy silver and they can't get it at any kind of cheap rates at the moment, so they look to other avenues, and the single cheapest piece of silver that anybody can buy is more expensive than it used to be. So people buy it. It's just how it's gone. You know, people will constantly buy, I've seen it on eBay at the moment, people buying silver one ounce coins for 30, 35 pounds an ounce for Britannia's. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's not a sustainable price, certainly in my eyes, but at the same time, it's a market price that people are paying for these silver coins, which is, you know, something that people are going to try and take advantage of. Now, is that morally ethical to do? There's a partially a reason why I don't actually sell this kind of stuff on eBay like that. I don't think it's morally right for me to be here on YouTube advocating advantage rates of silver, buying from Europe and then turning around and flipping that and making a significant profit on it on eBay, for example, or over on the Silver Forum. That's that's not what I'm about. I personally don't mind about that. But it is an interesting concept that, for me anyway, at the back end of these purchases, that there is this extra avenue. Now, it doesn't sound. It, it sounds all fantastic. You know, you're great. You're going to have this huge increase in the price of your silver. But this is very much focused on individual selling to individual people, and that is something that a lot of people ignore as a potential barrier for selling silver in bulk. And they just take it as granted. They go, ah, oh, okay, well, that means all of my silver will come out at a much better price and I'll get this price for it. And that's fantastic. I can rely upon that. But then the actual act of selling that silver is a lot more difficult than people expect or think. You know, you have to have a registered sell a seller profile. You have to have a reputable seller profile as well. And it's very important. Otherwise, if you you know, just a random person selling silver coins on eBay, there could be quite a lot of potential wariness, perhaps less so on eBay. It's more of a secure platform for the buyer. But places like the Silver Forum or Facebook or Instagram, there are going to be people who are very wary of it. And I see it every day when people come on to places like the Silver Forum and try and sell silver at what is arguably very good prices. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how many new sellers there are going to try and be. And it's probably going to disappoint quite a lot of people that they can't get that instant return that people want. And again, it's about this sort of mental um, mental kind of thinking of silver and gold as being these get-rich-quick scheme things where you can buy something at a certain price one day and it's going to be another market value the next and you're going to make a big profit on it. That's just not necessarily how silver and gold will work, especially in silver's favour on the other side of this Brexit transition date. Now, it's going to cause, I think, an interesting paradigm shift in the way that we, uh, we in the United Kingdom anyway, buy and sell silver. And it's one which I think that a lot of people in the US can take, you know, take heed of because there are more sales taxes coming in on online retailers, on silver, on gold. And in, in the US as well, I mean, there are people who, uh, there are businesses that are forced to pay sales tax, or, you know, distance selling sales tax if there's out-state purchases on gold or on silver. And that's you know, significantly high cost to a business and to the customer. And one which I think will have a positive impact on that lower end stuff, but for somewhere like America, it's gonna be really difficult because there are so many different 
retailers, so many different avenues, so many different states with so many different rules and laws. And of course, it's one rule if you're buying online, it's another rule if you just drive down the road to your local coin store. Now for us in the United Kingdom, we don't really have a kind of coin store economy that we can go and buy from. Uh, so all of our purchases are kind of done online and it, it's really kind of, I think, an interesting comparison to make between the UK and the US. And the US is going more towards that kind of area. And I think people in the US are sort of looking at sales taxes on silver and it putting them off a little bit, going to more of the golden end, if there are at least sales taxes that are not on that stuff. So it's quite an interesting kind of thought provoking topic that it does have positive impact, but I think you know, I focused a lot on the positive there. I do want to also just really hammer home that I do not personally think that taxation on precious metals, certainly certain types of precious metals, is I don't think it's appropriate. I think it's actually completely counterintuitive for any uh, government or any organisation, any you know local authority to taxation to put taxation on precious metal purchasing, especially when it's on things like U.S. eagles or Britannias or home country coins that are capital gains tax exempt or have you know advantage status for savers ultimately these things should be looked at as the same as any other financial product it's a savings mechanism and people who are for the most part buying this stuff are not buying it as a business for a short term kind of flipping situation people are buying this for that long term for holding it for a longer period of time such that when the time comes to sell it it will you know, be of benefit to them and to tax it both at the front end and the back end. It, you know, we haven't really talked about capital gains taxes. When you uh, when you sell at a profit at the other end, you're taxed again on your profit, which is again counterintuitive. Certain items in the UK anyway are exempt from that, but there is talk about changes to the capital gains tax status of, well not status of the coins, but the allowances of coins. And who knows, one day Britannia's and other items could just be you know, capital gains taxed at the other end, which would be a right shame. So that in itself is going to be in a sort of another sort of interesting paradigm that maybe we'll talk about another time. I don't think it's something that's relevant right now, but sales taxes certainly are. And it's something that, uh, you know, pays a lot of attention to my way of thinking anyway for my purchases. And, you know, simple things like the, the James Bond bars, which I showcased on the channel a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, from the Royal Mint, this is filmed in advance, by the way. I am sending these back uh, as soon as I can, just so everybody knows. Um, the point is that these James Bond bars, they are all taxable in terms, well, the gold one's tax exempt because it's gold and that's wonderful, but the silvers are all taxable because they are bar form uh, from Europe. So these are interesting ones where they're always going to be taxable. They're always going to hold this extra value. And I've seen it on other Royal Mint, sort of like the Britannia bars, for example, um, when they came out, they were, of course, taxable from the Royal Mint and, you know, they held value because of that tax, po that tax point. The cheapest that anybody could buy them in the UK, in the EU, was a certain price and they held that premium over spot because of the taxes. So if the government decided tomorrow to abolish VAT, sales taxes on silver, what would happen? What would that cause? Well, you know, for a lot of people right now, as I said earlier in the video, there's this kind of reliance on this additional value that you've been relying upon um, when you buy your silver. You know, for us in the UK, we do buy our silver at sometimes 25, 30% over spot price. And we rely on the fact that one day it's gonna go up so far that we can make a profit. Or we rely on the fact that we can sell it at that premium price because the taxation helps that premium be held. If VAT was suddenly abolished on silver tomorrow by the UK government, which I personally can't see them ever doing because it's such a cash cow for them, but if they did, it would potentially be quite calamitous for a significant number of people. It would mean that we can get access to buying cheap silver. That would be fantastic and I would applaud that. But for people who hold silver, it could have a negative impact in the short term. Now, the whole message here about taxation on silver is that ultimately for, for me anyway, for the way that I invest and buy silver and hold silver for the longer term, I don't see it as a massive barrier. There's a reason why I have a lot of silver. I think it is going to be a long-term asset which is very, very much valued. And I think that it's going to hold its value, whether it be because of the taxes or whether it be because of the increase in market prices from spot price or from any other, you know, there, there's so many technologies that use silver. It, it is a very valuable asset. And ultimately, I think it will be 
of benefit to me as a stacker. And that's kind of why I buy it. It's why I have silver in the first place. There's also an element of collectability for a lot of the things that I buy. And I think that's going to hold very well, even through this transition period of selling and buying and taxation and all of that. So ultimately it's one of these really, it's almost like a triple counterintuitive thing. Sales tax is a bad thing, but it's also a good thing because it helps hold value on your coins. But ultimately it doesn't matter about the taxation because if you hold it for long enough and you choose the time that you want to exit from silver and sell it at whatever price that you want to sell it for, then ultimately I don't think it makes too much of a difference. And that all comes down to, of course, your kind of selling strategy, your exit strategy, where you want to be with your silver selling side of things, how you want to release the funds and the money that you've locked up into these coins, into these precious metal items. You know, there's so much to kind of consider and factor into these things. Now, that sounds like an awful lot of, um, you know, I've sort of verbally just belched onto the screen here and talked at length about things which perhaps have hardly any consequence. But I do think that it does have consequence for people who are new to precious metals to understand that if you are going to be looking to uh, rely on the premium that is attached to these, you know, Silver Britannia certainly, if you buy them with no VAT, if you buy them, say, from Europe right now, then you're almost sort of guaranteed to hold the value where it is. If you buy them with the VAT from a UK seller, um, I think come January 2021, if we're on a transition period or however long that's going to be for, there'll be an avenue by which that will be retainable. It's very questionable in the long term how it will be because, of course, there'll be so many people doing it, so many people trying to sell it that there'll be little tiny price wars and it'll all filter down to the lowest common denominator and there will be this kind of paradigm shift to that new market value that will happen. There'll be, you know, there'll be sort of spikes, ups, downs, and then it'll all tail off like a, like a heartbeat. It'll go up and down and then it'll just settle. So there's going to be interesting times ahead. And if you are a new stacker, if you're a new purchaser of silver, then yeah, definitely something to think about. I haven't even really touched on the fact that sales tax VAT, it's billed as a tax on consumers, which ultimately it is if you're buying your silver from big players. But ultimately, it's a taxation on businesses uh, because, again, this market value right now, you know, we can buy silver at a certain market value, but we don't uh, because we want to get it as cheap as possible or, you know, we don't know about these other revenues. So we buy it at higher than market value prices. And, you know, ultimately, the sales tax is imposed by companies. Uh, but people will still buy a piece of silver at a certain price inclusive of tax. So it's a really interesting argument and one which I feel quite strongly about because taxation on silver is a really hot potato topic. Ultimately, I think it's a bad thing. I don't mind paying taxes like income taxes if I'm as a business trading and making money and, uh, and that's fine. That's part of life and it's good for me to pay taxes. I like being part of a society and contributing to that society. But taxation on savings, taxation on investments is, in my opinion, a, a counterproductive thing for any government to do. You want your citizens to save money for their retirement. It makes the reliance on public services and health care and, uh, you, you know, sort of universal credit and benefits. It makes the reliance on that less, which is better for everybody involved. So anyway, I've started to ramble again. Thank you once again to all of my rambling society members who do listen to my ramblings they tend to tail off after about minute 14 into these tangents so thank you for sticking with me give us a shout out down in the comment section if you're a byb rambling society member and you enjoy my inane ramblings i aim next week to have this scripted video i've been ferociously writing a script and i'm up to something like three and a half thousand words already so i want to kind of tidy it up make it interesting it's, a, it's i think a really interesting topic about um, about truth, about algorithms, about lies, the modern world that we live in, fake news, there's a whole host of different things and an interesting story about a very disgruntled customer as well. It's a, it's a very interesting topic and one which I hope you guys will enjoy when it does come out, but I'm still working on it. So that's where we are. Thank you one and all for watching this far if you have. Like if you did, that would be very helpful for everything we do here on YouTube. Subscribe if you want to see videos from us in the future. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.